I'm Brad Levitt, president of AFT Construction. If you are a contractor, are into design or architecture, this is the channel for you. Hit that subscribe button, hit that little bell, that way those notifications come through every time we post a new video. So Ignacio Soto had a good question for us. He said he's looking at doing a 1500 square foot home in Flagstaff. What would the cost be? Can you do water wells? Now water wells are definitely an option. Um, as far as cost, it really varies by area. You know, we build here in the Phoenix area, so I know our square footage here. Um, it's gonna vary up there. And, and again, when you're thinking about pricing, it's a very complex question because uh, it really depends on lots. So if you have an HOA community and you have a flat lot where it's already been pre-developed and utilities are there, it's gonna be a lot less expensive to buy than purchasing raw dirt, where you have to do the site work and excavation and build that and bring utilities up. And we have other projects that are up on the hill we have to bring utilities or sewer all the way up to the top of the hill or propane tanks underground. So there's a lot of questions and variables, you know, finishes. Anytime you're doing a smaller home, um, a lot of times it's a little bit more challenging to build for less expensive per square foot because you still have the mobilization cost of all the trade partners that have to get there. So, you know, whether you're doing a 1500 square foot home or 8,000 square foot home, you still have those mobilizations by the subcontractors you know, travel costs and deliveries and so forth. And so you're still gonna incur those fees and you can't absorb them as much um, in a bigger square foot. Uh, so again, definitely talk to some local builders in your area as far as square foot pricing, uh, you know, down here in the Phoenix area. On average, you know, there's a lot of variables there, but a lot of them are anywhere from 250 to 400 a foot, probably for 1500. Something very elegant might be in the five to 600 square foot. So Amy Wall had a really good question for us and she asked, how do we protect our windows during construction? And there's actually a few things we do, depending on the window style that we're installing in the home and door style, you know, there's a few different products. So one that we really like is Drop Cloth. It's a company we found at the Builder Show and they're located out of North Carolina, I believe. And what's nice is it's a, a soft fabric and it has a sticky membrane on the back, but it, the membrane is just more for friction. You know, it, it's not a sticky, um, adhesive and so what happens is we can put them on countertops we can put them on windows and wrap them and then that way it doesn't damage the finish either so it, it does a really good job keeping it indestructible throughout construction and then we also use ram boards ram board has corner jams that we can put in doorways we put them around window jams especially if we have um, a curved jam where the drywall is wrapping into the window we can wrap those uh, in in the ram board edging and then tape those together and it creates a nice frame there that protects it and we'll also cover all of our thresholds as well, especially at the great room, you know, in the multi-sliders, you know, entry door, um, other French doors throughout the house. Those are super important to get those tape protected. Um, and we do the same thing with our tubs. I mean, we're going to take this conversation a little farther. So even our tubs will cover um, throughout construction. That way debris is not falling in or, um, you know, people aren't storing it or scratching it or anything else that happens. So protection is a key part of any project. And... We also have a line item in our pricing with our customers for job site protection. And although there's a cost there, you know, to purchase RAM board, drop cloth, and some of these other products, you know, the client understands value protects our investment, right? Because if we have to replace things, there's going to be a big cost. So it's easier to prevent that with these safety measures than have to um, replace the actual um, features and upgrades that are in the home. Okay, so one of the questions from our listeners, I'm, I'm going to credit Jesse Smith with this question. He had asked, you know, what is my passion behind the scenes? Or, you know, some of us, maybe we have um, affinity for cars, you know, vehicles. You see some behind me. None of these are mine, by the way. They're one of my clients. Um, and, you know, is it sports? What is it? So I, I love sports for me. I, I'm super active. So, you know, hiking, running, golf, basketball, football, volleyball, tennis, you know, these are all sports I love to play. Some of them I've slowed down a little bit as I've gotten older, but you know, golf I love, I'm super competitive. But for me, it's, I don't really have, you know, I'm not into watches or cars, you know, none of that. It's more travel. I love to travel with my family and six kids. So we love to do those excursions where we can go together and it's always an adventure taking six kids on an airplane. Um, so that is our focus, my wife and I and children, is we love to see different parts and expose our children to different cultures and, um, other areas of the world and, and the beauty that's around us. So we, we definitely love to travel. Off the top of my head, I've been to Australia, um, Argentina, 
I've been, you know, US, Canada, Mexico, which are pretty straightforward. And then in Europe, have done um, England and Italy and France. And I think that's it for as far as countries go. So there's many more countries to see. As far as the US states go, I've been um, probably 38, 40 of the 50 states here in the US I've been fortunate to visit. So Muggy on Rim Construction had a great question for us. They said, how can you really get all the decisions done for all these finishes before you start construction? And we actually have really refined that process to nearly have everything resolved. And it's super advantageous. I mean, just as you're thinking of a global overall objective with the client as you're communicating expectations, helping them understand the value there that by making all these decisions up front, now the home is going to be expedited, it's going to be less costly, um, and there's going to be less change orders, which homeowners love to hear that. Minimal change orders, quicker build, and less expense. You know, these are, these are um, pain points that really hit true to them. So that's really important. That'll help them with the process to understand expectation. And then setting a firm date that you won't start construction until decisions are made. Now with that said, on most of our projects, everything's decided on. We've already figured out all the finishes, all the details, and everything that's going into that home. Now on occasion, we do have some of these custom homes where maybe the wallpapers to be determined or some of the plumbing fixtures, and that's okay. You can have allowances there, but just understand that it's more important to say, okay, this wall is going to have wallpaper and then you have a, an allowance for that. So in that way, as you're going through construction, you're planning for that, you know, as you go to drywall, it's smooth. You're not gonna paint the wall. So it's really easy to plan for that as long as you know wallpaper is gonna be there, even if the choice is to be determined later. So try to identify at least the scope of work, which is most important. And in some cases, it's okay to have an allowance made for appliances, plumbing fixtures, wallpaper. Some of these finishes are gonna be a year down the road. And then you can track those and make sure they get decided upon uh, when you need them.